What's up, guys? Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Supergirl Season 5, Episode 13. It's a super life. So, not gonna lie. Um, I was not looking forward to this episode. <laughs> Whenever I saw that Mr. Mitzel Spittle Dick, or whatever his name is, was coming back, um, I just wasn't looking forward to it, because this episode last time, I can't remember what season it was. It may have been two or three. Um, I do remember that Monel was involved, and it was like, Kara and Barry both got trapped in his world and he was trying to convince Kara to love him. It was just, it was all really weird and really dumb and they tried to compare like Kara and mon -El's relationship to like Barry and Iris's and that's just no comparison whatsoever. <laughs> um, because Barry and Iris are the goat in relationships as far as the CW is concerned. So I was not looking forward to seeing this episode and then after I, you know, because normally I go on IMDb to make sure I've got all the episode titles correct and looking at the ratings this one was actually rated fairly well now granted I don't always trust the ratings on IMDb because like the ones where um, Wynn was back in the show I actually enjoyed those episodes for the most part and that was mainly because I like Wynn as a character and I, I was glad to see him back but they were rated like what was it yeah 6.5 for both episodes that he was involved um, so Obviously, I didn't really feel that way about those two episodes. So to see that this one was rated an 8.7 <laughs> really kind of threw me off because I'm thinking, okay, that's not what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> I was expecting an episode because I'm pretty sure the first episode he was in was not rated very highly. However, after watching this episode, I gotta admit, it was probably one of the better episodes so far this season. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I like what they did with it. The only real gripe that I have with the episode, I mean, obviously, some of the character stuff is still really goofy and really stupid, but the main gripe that I have is the, the message of this episode is pretty obvious to me. You know, the message of you shouldn't change your past, you, you made your choices, you have to live with them, you can't just go back and fix whatever problem you want to. It's kind of a... a obvious message and especially in our world whenever we can't <laughs> like at this point we still cannot go back in time and redo anything so on the one hand it could be a message more about don't have any regrets because what you've done up to this point can't be changed so you have to learn from your mistakes and learn to fix them and learn to live with the world you're living in now because even though you might think some of these changes would fix everything they probably won't in the long run. And so I like the fact that we did get to see not just one or two instances. We actually got to see many different reasons why this change that Kara was secretly wanting deep down would not have worked. You know, I like the fact that we went from, okay, I'll just tell her before Lex does, but then find out, well, that didn't exactly work out because, you know, this one problem. And then she tells her a little bit before that because... She's like, oh, well, there's this one fight we had, so if I tell her before that, then that'll fix it, but then ends up causing another problem. So she's like, I know, I just need to go back and tell her right when we met, or right when we started becoming friends. And sure, it's like, oh, cool, we did all these awesome, all this awesome stuff, we were working together, but then ultimately it costs Kara her friends and family, because she decides she's going to step up and reveal her secret identity. So it was very interesting to see the different storylines they decided to utilize. They also brought back a lot of characters too, you know, obviously Monel showed up. Um we got to see what was his name from last season? Uh I cannot remember his name now and it's bugging me. I'm actually Lockwood. Lockwood, that was his name. Um we got to see him again and in a little bit more of a uh a psycho psychotic role almost I would say, mainly because his family decided to jump off a roof thinking, well, Supergirl will save us, right? And then they died because she couldn't get there. Um, very interesting story for him, and it it really just showed kind of how dark some of these stories could get. Um, and what I was not expecting, though, the one little twist thrown in this story, because everything up to that point, I was kind of like, okay, so that she's going to go back, she thinks she can fix it, but each time it's going to be something else. It's going to be a new problem that presents itself. The one thing I was not expecting was for them to visit a world where she and Lena were never friends. Just because, I don't know, it was a part of the message that I guess would have, I, I assumed would have been obvious. You know, it's 
more so, yes, you've made some mistakes, but your friendship with her has obviously turned her into a better person overall. But to actually see it and see how dark the world became, I gotta admit, I was kind of interested in that. Now, it didn't end particularly well for me because I was kind of thinking, okay, we're visiting this dark future where now, or not really the future, but dark present where everything is really screwed up. I was expecting it to be a bit darker. You know, I've seen some kids shows that whenever they visit a dark future or an alternate future where things are really bad, I've seen them kill off characters before. I was kind of expecting that here, and obviously they did kill off Monel and uh, Lena in that one time whenever she told her right before they fought Rain. But I was expecting it to happen in this other future too, because there was a chance that they couldn't get back. You know, when they killed Lena and Monel and the other one and Sam, I was like, well, I mean, who cares? Because this is just an alternate timeline. You know, that could possibly happen if you decide to make it that way, but we know you're not going to. So I thought they were going to really try to up the tension by maybe killing off a couple of characters while Mitzel Spitalik, I don't remember how to say it, don't correct me, I don't care. While he can't access his fifth dimension powers, I thought it would raise the stakes a lot more to kill off some characters, but ultimately none of that happens. They stop Brainy, they stop Rain, and then eventually, you know, he gets the hat gets the fifth dimension powers and stops uh, or brings everything back to how it was right before Kara's about to die. And I just felt like they could have really pushed a little bit more in that in that time. You know, they really could have done, I guess, a little bit more to up the intensity and up the stakes. But instead, they just sort of played it safe. And I don't know. I, I, I guess that was one part of it that I was a little disappointed on. But again, I like the fact that they did show that side of it as well. It wasn't just, hey, you can't change the past. It was also, but look, you need to accept the past as well because look at all the good that you did to change Lena and make her a better person. So uh, I really like the speech as well that she gave Lena at the end just because I thought it was very well worded. You know, I'm sorry for my part in all of this, but... I'm done taking responsibility for what you're doing now, what your decisions are. If you decide to do all this stuff, that's not on me. That's your choice. You know, I understand why you're upset with me, but what you're doing is on you. And it's very true because I've said it before. I think Lena's temper tantrum basically this season is a little ridiculous. You know, I understand her being hurt by all this stuff, but it does feel like she's just sort of jumped onto this, I'm now evil and I'm going to control the world now because I just can't trust anybody. It just, it does seem a little far for her. Um, so I really like that speech. But everything else though, I mean, that's basically all this episode was, was just Kara getting to see these alternate timelines that could have happened if she had told Lena her secret identity and then the one where she was never friends with her. That's basically all it was, and for the most part, it was well handled. You know, I really, I, I liked seeing the different aspects, and I liked, honestly, I did like this version of, I'm just going to call him Mixie. I, I didn't want to call him Mixie because I'm just like, that's such a stupid name, but I'm tired of trying to pronounce whatever his actual name is, because I probably have pronounced it wrong every single time. Um, but I did like this version of him better than the one that we saw previously, because at first... There was a question in my mind, like, he looks a little different, but it's been so long since I've seen him, maybe I just don't recognize him because it's been that long. But then they did show a clip from his original episode. I'm like, okay, okay, so he's changed his form now. Got it. I I did appreciate them letting us know that, so that way I wasn't sitting here questioning the whole episode. Is he a different actor, or is this the same guy? I can't remember. Um, but I, I like this guy a lot better. I thought a lot of his deliveries were a lot funnier uh how invested as well he was getting in all of this like just clutching onto cars i'm like oh i know this is intense isn't it? it just i don't know something about it made me laugh so yeah all in all i mean it was a better episode than i was expecting it wasn't fantastic i wouldn't i wouldn't rate it an 8.7 on imdb but i mean it was solid it was not the bland generic oh well don't change your past guys you gotta learn to accept your past it wasn't that kind of preachy message. It was very well shown in a way that didn't feel like they were beating you down with it. Um, and they didn't they didn't have to hold on too many because there was a there was one more thing that I just remembered. And now I forgot it too. 
Oh, uh, what was it? Because it was something where I expected it to to really hold on this scene for a while and be like, you know, we're we're here for a while, guys. We're here dealing with this for like a good minute. Isn't it so emotional? And Carl was just like, well, let's just move on. And I really appreciated that. I don't remember what it was now, though. <laughs> Dang it. My brain... <sighs> I don't know why my brain forgets things so easily. But anyways, with all that being said, that's it for this episode. So on to the next one. And now episode 14, The Bodyguard. So I really figured out what it was about the last episode that made me enjoy it more. William wasn't in it. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, as soon as that plot line returned at the beginning of this episode, I'm like, ugh, God, this stupid force romance is the stupidest thing about the season. It really is just frustrating. Because, honestly, everything else about this episode, aside from maybe Alex's story, I really enjoyed I enjoy seeing Lex try to play, you know, both sides of the game, trying to use Supergirl, trying to use uh, Brainiac, basically just trying to really play them into his hands while he's also trying to manipulate Leviathan and get in their good graces and probably try to take them over. Um, I enjoy seeing Brainy dealing with, again, his decisions, the fact that he's working with Lex. It's hard for him to really work with because on the one hand, yes, mathematically, it makes sense to work with Lex, but he's a lot more than just the numbers. You know, he's he's also got these feelings inside that make it difficult for him to just betray his friend's trust and completely work with Lex. Um, so it's making it hard for him to justify a lot of what he's doing. But when he thinks about what's the best chance of taking down Leviathan, Lex is the best chance. Um, so him dealing with that is very interesting as well. Everything to do with Obsidian and kind of this technology and this woman who lost her husband because of the VR technology and what it did, you know, convincing him that this other world was real, you know, their home planet was real. I mean, very, very intriguing stuff and good commentary too, which I'm not used to saying in Supergirl because most of the time the commentary is super forced and in your face. This was actually pretty well done in a way where they didn't really necessarily say one was right and one was wrong. It was like everybody is sort of in that gray area. <laughs> and Lena, too, same exact thing with her technology that's supposed to take away the feelings of... It's supposed to take away the feelings of fear and anger and violence and all of that. Um, but we see it's not perfect. And I do think there are going to be other things that she didn't account for. You know, she says at the end of this, oh, it's just because I didn't account for injustice. It's something else in the brain, but it's fixed now. I wouldn't doubt if they're going to find another little thing that she didn't account for because humans are all very different. We all work differently. Everybody's brain works differently. So yeah, I mean, very interesting story there as well because in her mind, she really does see herself as the good guy. And it's not... She even says, I'm not trying to take everybody's free will. I'm trying to make it to where everybody can live freely without fear of their fellow man. And I mean... That in itself is intriguing because it's more, I think about Druig's story from Eternals. Like, as bosh as that story was handled, there was an interesting concept in there of he had the ability to control all these people. And seeing all the wars that were waged by humans, he thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to take control of these people and make it where they don't want to fight. <laughs> they don't want to wage war. That's my way of creating peace, is by controlling them. Lena... It seemed like she was going down that path, but we see that's not what she wants to do. She just wants to make it to where everybody's brains, essentially, that that's what they want is peace. They want to work together. They don't want to fight. They don't want to hate anybody. And that is an interesting concept, but I think ultimately what's going to cause it to fail is the fact that you have to have a little bit of that in you. Everybody has a dark side. If you don't have it, then you're not a... You're not who you truly are. It's the feelings, or it's not necessarily the feelings. It's more the the action of doing it that makes you, are you a good person or are you a bad person? Because everybody has those those dark thoughts. I mean, everybody, at some point, especially if you're driving in Atlanta traffic, let me tell you, <laughs> the dark thoughts are really in there. You're just like, you know, I could just get a little knock them off the road and stupid not using your blinker. It's right there. It's right on your steering wheel. You just have to push it, and then the blinker will blink, and then you're telling me you're coming into my lane. That's all you have to do. Stupid idiots. Anyways, um, but 
again, that's that's kind of the the moral quandary that's going on right now, and I do wonder if it's going to become more so like we'll we'll see that people change who they are and like they're not quite human, like there's something off about them. If that'll be what sort of shows Lena that her plans are not <laughs> useful, um, if it'll be something along the lines of what I said, you know, where it'll be something that she missed, you know, in this episode it was injustice, you know, that feeling that she missed that causes problems and it'll be another feeling that she didn't consider. Um, or is it going to be something where it does work fine and even though, you know, Supergirl and her friends are like, eh, we're not really sure about this, it does appear to work and it does appear to put people in this sense of peace and we don't want to fight. But somebody like Lex is going to come in and say, oh, thanks, I'm going to take that now and I'm going to use it to control people. I, I'm curious to see what the plan is there. And it's got me really engaged. Um, as far as the Obsidian tech, again, they've sort of gone back and forth a little bit as far as is this a good thing, is this a bad thing. Andrea is not really presented as a bad person, but when you really think about what this Obsidian tech is... It's very Matrix-like. You know, you're basically living in your own world where it's it's all virtual reality, so no fear of dying. But you can see, you can smell, you can taste it. Everything is there, and all you gotta do is put on the lenses. Which for people like me, I'm if you've seen Friends, I'm very much Rachel in the sense that I don't want anything near my eyes. Like I've had to be in a couple like stage plays and um, short films where there had to be some makeup applied to my eye like eyelids, not a fan. <laughs> I don't want anything touching my eyes. Honestly, if I, my girlfriend wears contacts, I don't want to watch her putting in contacts because I hate that feeling. So for people like me, it would suck because everybody else is living in this virtual world having fun and I'm just like, I'm not putting contacts in. I'm not doing this shit. Um, but as we saw from the villain of this episode, we see that it's not all roses and oh, everything's good and everything's perfect. No, some people do get addicted to that. And it makes sense. You know, you look at social media and what it's done in our lives. I mean, that's, it's a very good comparison because there are a lot of people that get lost in social media and they get addicted to it and they just, they're on it 24 seven and that's all their world is. You know, honestly, there's a lot of people that that's where they get all their information and not everybody on social media is giving the correct information. You know, on either side. So, yeah, it was very well set up story in this episode. Um, and again, just everything with Lex and Brainy. I, I don't really know what to expect. I will say the one gripe I have with this story is I do feel like Brainy, he should be able to sense a little bit more what Lex is doing. Because he talks about, like, oh, he doesn't use logic at all. I would disagree with that. I think Lex is a very logical thinker. He's just willing to make sacrifices to make it appear like he's not thinking logically, but he's accounted the losses into his overarching plan. And I feel like at some point Brainy needs to figure that out and account for the fact that Lex is probably going to go for the highest body count that he can because he doesn't care. You know, I think if you're thinking of it in chess terms, Lex is somebody who will always beat you, but he's going to sacrifice his queen super early. Because I think it really throws off the opponent to be like, wait a minute, you just you just gave that up? <laughs> you, you just gave me your queen? That, that doesn't make any sense. But ultimately, Lex has already accounted for that, and he's prepared to use your confusion as a part of his plan as well. So I feel like Brainy, he should have already figured that out by now, because it's been a, a few episodes of him working with Lex, and I feel like that thought should have already entered his mind. Like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be thinking of him as a logical player who's going to take the best possible option, I need to think of it more as a logical player who's going to take whatever option he can that will at least leave everybody confused for the time being while he's working on his own plan. Um, so that's just, it's the only gripe I have because I feel like Brainy is smart enough to figure that part out. Um, at least that's how I'm seeing it. They may not be going that way at all. <laughs> but that's how I picture it, at least. It's not... So much a, oh, he's like the Joker, just anarchy and chaos and no sense of what he's doing. It's logic that doesn't always make sense to somebody who's like, I'm going to go through this course without hitting any walls. Lex is like, I'm going to hit this wall and that wall, go through that wall, and then I'll get to the end. Um, but anyways, on to the stuff that is just not great. Alex, 
I hate to say it, but she's becoming less important now that she's out of the DEO. And they had that story where it's like, oh, I just, I mean, I can't stop fire. I can't get us out of a, a burning building. Like, I can't do any of this stuff. I don't really care. You know, like, I hate to say it, but Alex has not been an interesting character for me for quite a few seasons. Honestly, ever since season two, when they decided to basically make her whole story, oh, she's coming out, guys, that was it. Alex became such a less interesting character because of that, because that was her whole character. And there's so much more to a character than their sexual identity. So I just feel like they've not really grown out of that in the past few seasons. And so now giving her this feeling of, oh, I'm just not important to the team. I don't have any superpowers. Well, yeah, she's not ever had any powers. And yes, she's had teams behind her, the DEO, but she could still kick ass on her own. Like, there were times when she had to go one-on-one, -on -one, or it was just her and Kara, and she held her own fine, and that was perfectly fine. There was no question of, oh, well, she's not superpowered. No, she was smart enough to figure things out. So, it just feels very forced to have this story in there where she's like, I just, I feel like I'm useless, I feel like I can't do anything right. And then John gives her this weapon, which I will admit the weapon's pretty cool. <laughs> just oh, basically turns into whatever you can imagine. Um, I do wonder how far that goes goes though like is it only weapons can it turn into anything you imagine like if i imagined a taco could i eat it but then that would be weird because i'd eat it and then it could turn into something else in my stomach maybe i don't know i <laughs> i'm thinking way too hard about this this is probably not even gonna matter um but yeah i just i don't i feel like this story for alex is not all that interesting in my opinion and then of course the william stuff is just trash um Again, it's it's one of the most forced relationships I've seen in the CW, like all of the Erebor shows, and there have been a lot of forced relationships, to be fair. But this one for me just felt very out of nowhere. There was no hint. I mean, I saw it coming because, again, I I've basically got a sense of how the Arrowverse shows work with their relationships. If you've got two attractive people and they're constantly arguing and bickering and they're like, oh, I can't stand them, oh, I can't stand them they're going to get together at some point. Um, so that's just, I mean, it's what I expected to happen, but it just came out of nowhere. Like there was no hint of it, no hint of it, no hint of it. Crisis happens. And then suddenly we're back. And there was like one moment where she's like, Oh gosh, I'm standing so close. And then the very next episode, Ooh, William's here. Where did this come from? <laughs> like, just out of nowhere. Suddenly they're like, Ooh, William, Cara, Ooh, you and William. Ooh, it's like, what? What? <laughs> And then she's like, oh, no, I don't want to date him. And then the last episode happens and suddenly now she's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should try. I just don't care. <laughs> it's all stupid. Ugh. I just, I, I really hope we don't focus on it a whole lot. I just, I don't want to deal with it. Again, the reason last episode worked so well for me, or at least one of the reasons it was better. Because honestly, if I'm looking at this episode as a whole, there's so much more in this episode that I feel like I enjoyed watching and I enjoyed the story of more so than the last episode. Because again, I kind of got the gist of what the story was going to be early on, but I still enjoyed how they took it. But the thing is where that episode didn't really have anything that detracted from it and made me go, God, I got to sit through this. This episode did. So it's like I liked more in this episode than the last one, but I also hated more in this episode than the last one. And so that's why... If I'm picking between the two, I liked the last episode a bit more because at least there was nothing in it that made me groan when we had to deal with it for like five minutes. Um, so that's just, that's how I feel about it. And maybe some people really like William and Cara together. If so, go post about it on your DeviantArt fanfic websites or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I just, I want to see a good superhero show. If you had good romance in it, that's fine. But putting two people together in one season after they were constantly arguing and bickering and they didn't like each other, it's not romance. <laughs> I know that's what Hallmark tells you romance is, but it's not romance. Uh, again, Barry and Iris, they're the goat. So, uh, But that's about it for this episode, so on to the final one of these three. See you there. And now episode 15, Reality Bites. I'm so sorry, Supergirl. I'm so sorry. I... I gave you way too much credit in the last episode, talking about, you know, doing messages and trying to really 
make people think about something without bashing them over the head with it. I'm so sorry. I forgot that this show loves to bash people over the head with their message. Because uh, we're back to it. Okay, so. Um, yeah, the, the trans hate message in this one. Obvious, overdone, ridiculously just forced down your throat <laughs> just to make sure that you feel bad if you're not like trying to do something I mean if you're just sitting there doing nothing even if you're not trans or you don't know anybody that's trans it doesn't matter if you're doing nothing you're a trash human being you should do something because if you're not doing anything then you're just you're ignorant you're stupid and you're a terrible person that's right and that's what I hate about this show, is whenever it does these messages like this, it doesn't try to, I don't know, tell it in a, a way, first of all, it's subtle. Again, way over the top bashing your head in with its message. But also, it just, it gets to a point where it's just like, okay, so you really want me to feel something, which is making me not feel something. You know, like, it's so heavy-handed that it's actually working against your message, because I'm like, I don't care. You're trying to force this message, and I don't care. Like, really? <laughs> oh my gosh, does it happen? Yes, probably. There's, honestly, there's a bunch of terrible people out there, hiding in the wings, doing things that doesn't get a lot of focus because other things are getting focus. It happens to literally everyone. Oh no, it doesn't happen to white people. It happens to white people too. There are groups out there that are racist against white people. Honestly, a lot more of them are outspoken now because it's become acceptable to be racist against white people. But, I mean, it happens. There's always going to be hate. There's always going to be people that do horrible things to people based on their sexuality or their gender or if they're trans. Like, it's going to happen. I'm not saying that's okay, but this message that you're trying to force down our throats... First of all, the only people that you're going to be reaching with this message are people that already believe in your message. Anybody that doesn't believe in your message already, this isn't going to be something where like, yes, I'm going to stand up for this message now. Like, it's not going to change anybody's minds and make them feel like, I got to do something. And anybody who disagrees with your message, you're not going to change their minds with this show. They're not watching this show because they probably heard there's a trans superhero on it and they're like, I'm not watching that. I can't stand those type of people. Oh, just like, it's, it's just so poorly written. And that was the whole episode. Like, it's not, okay, not the whole episode. But it was basically the main point of this episode. They focused so much time on it between Carr trying to help her, between Brainy trying to help and on top of that, Yvette, I hope I don't see much more of her. Oh my god. Like, ugh. <laughs> Talk about stereotyping. Literally, the person playing Yvette is just one big walking stereotype. Like, if I'm, if I'm thinking a trans woman, trans black woman, no less, this is honestly the first stereotype that comes to mind. Like, oh honey, no, I'm not gonna take that from anybody. Like, just... Everything about this this <laughs> performance was just so stereotypical. I'm like, you're actually making it worse because you're stereotyping and you're trying to tell me, no, you can't stereotype and you can't hate this. <laughs> What's your message? Ugh. So yeah, rough to sit through. Again, from somebody that... I'm not... I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into political and like, social issues right now, because oh, it's just, it's one big, dark wormhole that once you get into it, especially on the internet, you're never getting out. <laughs> so, I'm just going to move on to the other story. Um, a little bit more interesting, the one thing that they did not explain, though, is why this Richard guy kidnapped the two other men that was with, um, along with Trevor. It just, it seemed very out of nowhere. <laughs> just, oh yes, they're being tortured in this other room, but Trevor cheated on his, or helped his wife cheat on him in this virtual world, so he mainly tortures him. But then what's the other two guys doing there? Like, what, why did, why did you get them as well? <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I thought that was a little weird that we never found out what the other two guys had to do with anything. I guess they were friends with Trevor, so maybe that's why they were invited along. It's just because they normally did everything with him. Um, still seemed a little weird, though, that we didn't get any explanation outside of that as to why Richard felt the need to torture them. Um, but yeah, I mean, kind of an interesting topic, because in this virtual world, yeah, I mean, this probably would happen. I mean, honestly... You could even take it down to where we are now in our society without this virtual online world that everybody can live in. You think about where we are, how many people are having online affairs? You know, how many people are sexting other people that aren't their significant other? How many people are doing stuff like that? It would totally happen in a, in a world that built this whole Matrix-like <laughs> virtual reality simulator. There are definitely going to be some people that are like, you know, it's not like we're actually doing anything. Like, it's all virtual reality. It's not actually real. So, yeah, I'm just going to hook up with them. It's fine. <laughs> That's a problem. And honestly, it's something I'm glad that they touched on. Like, it's so funny that the other message in this was so forced and so hammered in. And then this one is, like, a much better message to give, especially in our current society and how prevalent the internet and online and social media and all of that is i mean hell facebook lets you go what is it like invisible or something like that go is it invisible mode i don't remember but essentially you can hide your messages from your significant other like that in itself already presents so many opportunities for people to cheat without cheating you know like it's just it's something that i'm glad the show addressed now, they didn't go that much into it. Um, they basically had one <laughs> line near the end with Kelly and Alex. Um, so, I, I don't know. It's it's definitely, again, showing more of the detriment that this virtual reality world has. So, it definitely feels like Obsidian is going to be a bad thing overall. Because at first, it kind of felt... I, I couldn't really tell whether it was supposed to be a good thing or whether it was supposed to be a bad thing. Because, again you have a lot of our main characters are like, this just sounds like a bad idea. But then Kelly, who Alex is dating, is fully on board, and she's one of the people that helped create it. And she's like, no, this is going to be great. It's going to help people escape from reality for a bit. It's really going to help people with, you know, trauma and depression and all of this stuff. Um, so I don't know. It's been kind of an interesting topic to discuss throughout the season. The other thing that sucked about this episode is just the fact that... We, again, have to deal with William and Kara, and then also on top of that, nothing to do with Lex or Lena or anything with Levi. I guess there was the little thing with Leviathan, apparently, because I think the old woman that took Richard's body, um, I think she works for them, if I remember right. I don't know what they're doing with all these people. Apparently, there's something going on with Obsidian where people, essentially, they get trapped in the world almost, I, I think, or their brain gets fried. I don't know what happened, but this Richard guy, it happened to him. Not only could he not exit the thing at the beginning, like several months ago, but then at the end when John throws him into the wall, like he starts hallucinating as if he's in the world, even though he's not. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to make of that. And they had all those bodies that were like hanging from the ceiling. I don't know if all these people are brain dead or if they're just trapped in the simulation, or if they're actually dead. So it definitely raises some questions, and it's something that I am excited for. However, I know that next episode is probably not going to be about that, because Jeremiah died, so I don't know what that's about. Um, honestly, I totally forgot how Jeremiah's story ended last time. I know he was working with um, Lillian Luther, I think it was. So I don't know what his story is, and I don't exactly know why i don't know if the actor they just couldn't bring him back or maybe he he died i'll have to look that up after this is done and see why they decide to kill jeremiah off or maybe he's not actually dead and this is just something to talk about jeremiah again but um whatever the case that's it for these three episodes let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what were your thoughts on these three let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff leave a like and subscribe for future supergirl reviews and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out